Hey guys, welcome back to the Rev and Evan channel. As you can see, I got my man Brian Wolf here. We're up in Michigan. We're gonna do another round of 7.3 Godzilla technology and stuff. So this is the first of a couple of videos that we're gonna to put together. And we're gonna start off today by taking a look at Brian's new race block. So Brian's done a bunch of uh, upgrades since his last motor, and he's gonna take you through this thing According to Brian, the last one made over 1,700 horsepower, and he thinks he could go over 1,800 horsepower with the modifications done to this block. So, Brian, what do we got? Okay, sure. So, again, this is a stock Ford 7.3 block, but what we did do is do some changes to it, so it's not an aftermarket casting. So this block has some of the features we had in the last motor, and then some new ones. So the new motor for next year, we're going to be running a Pro Charger, and we're going to be running methanol in it. So... The last block that we had had hard block in it, but only about halfway up the board. Is this one we filled all the way to the deck? Right. So this would be actually be a dry deck motor. Now let me just stop for one second. Sure. So in case anybody doesn't know, methanol lets the motor run a little bit cooler. Absolutely. Yeah, it definitely lets it run cooler. Don't really need uh, coolant in the block, and most people with methanol won't run even any coolant in the cylinder heads, especially if they have like a billet head. Myself, to me, if there's water jackets in the head. I think it's a lot better to use those to dissipate the heat that is there um, because air is an insulator. Sure. So if you kind of leave it stagnant, I'm just a little worried with the stock head casting that's a bit on the thinner side, there may be some problems. So my advice is uh, if there's water jackets in it, let some water flow through it. Right. So with this block, uh, the other thing that we did is you'll, everyone will know that they have a classic saw cut between the, between the boards and that on the stock engine is to help with cooling. On this, we won't really need that, but we also are fire ringing the cylinder heads on this, so we needed a receiver groove in the block to uh, go off the copper gasket. And if you can't explain what exactly that is. Yeah, a fire ring is really, looks it's almost like a big steel O-ring, and we put those in the cylinder head, and then that presses against the copper gasket, which then will go press against the receiver groove, and that gives you your combustion sealing on the engine. So uh, we'll be running that. The previous engine, we were in stock head gaskets on that. Right, so you just have a flat decked surface and all of your sealing is done by the compression of the head studs or head bolts. Correct, yep, absolutely. So we, so that's the new feature. Also on this, uh, it does have the, uh, the receiver grooves machined in it. Similar to the other block, this has uh, the bronze valve guides pushed uh, for the Jessel uh, keyed lifters. Uh, similar to the other block, this is set up for the 60 millimeter roller cam bearing. We have a tool steel canvas uh, by uh, Militia Products in Jackson, Michigan, Charlotte Westcott. So we're going to be running a few more camshaft development on this motor too when we get it on dyno. Um, the last one we had a pretty good first shot at it uh, right. with the mechanical roller. This one we want to try a few more things. Now again, um, in case people haven't seen the roller style bearings for the cam, Maybe explain a little bit about those. Sure. So the stock bearing is just, it's, a, it's a, uh, more like a journal bearing. It's Babbitt and it just works on a, a lubrication, um, but, you know, as a um, connecting rod bearing would work. This actually uh, is a roller cam bearing, so it's hardened needle, so you want to run that with a tool steel hardened cam. Otherwise, if you put kind of a normal cam there, you, you'll tear it up because it's just the surface on those journals aren't hard enough to accept it. Right. So just reducing parasitic drag. Mainly, yeah. So uh, the other thing, really cool feature on this block that I think is uh, going to help along with the stuff we talked about with the hard blocking, uh, the receiver grooves. This has, uh, Calais has been a big supporter of Godzilla stuff from day one. So, you know, they've offered a bunch of camshafts that we work with them on. Uh, they offer valve springs, they offer connecting rods, and now they're off also offering billet main caps. So uh, we took the opportunity on this motor to incorporate those. I'm excited about that. Um, nice thing too on that, we'll shoot a, show a little of that too, is they actually have little uh, wedges on the side that you can put a screwdriver on and pop the caps out because it's always difficult with the deep skirt block, nice fit, get those caps out. I saw that, so let's flip it over and take a peek. Okay, so you can see, you know, the billet caps. Um, and these little wedges on the side, there's a little spot put a screwdriver. If you if we took this off, screwdrivers on both sides and pop that cap straight out, which makes it you know quite easy. Of course, the other way that a lot of people will do it 
And uh, as they'll put a drill and tap a hole in here and just use a slide hammer. To right, pull it out. I've seen them be, uh, being pulled out that way. Um, the, what's the big advantage over the stock caps? Yeah, these are just way stronger. Yeah, it's in the, in the cast uh, cap. So. so a matter of just locating the crankshaft stays in place better, everything's stronger and... Caps, for sure. And again, we don't know the limits of the stock caps, you know, and right. uh, you know, one of the things we've always done is, you know, we, we want to try to get ahead of the failure as we're making more power. So, right. you know, like a, you know, so we have a certain place where we say, okay, beyond a certain horsepower RPM, we want to replace connecting rods and pistons. And we get asked that question all the time. I even see on a lot of the Facebook forums, um, I'm on one of the A2 deck forums and a lot of the Fox body stuff. What's the most horsepower you could put in a stock five liter? And what's the most horsepower you could put in this crankshaft? And I, I hate when people throw those numbers around because people um, a lot of times don't understand the tune of the engine. The harmonics of the crank spinning can cause cracks. So you can crack a block due to har harmonics if you don't have a proper balance or you just over revved it and you have a thin wall cast block like the old five liter blocks are. Uh, there's so many things that could cause damage to a block other than just the crank blowing up or a rod breaking a rod that it's so hard to say what the performance limit is as far as horsepower. But stronger obviously is better. And you know, in the mm. 50 days, that's how we did find stuff out. Guys just pushed it to the limit and things blew up and you put a stronger crank in or then you switch to a race style block, um, girdles and all those types of things. So it's pretty neat to see these parts coming online um, before the failures are happening. Yeah, absolutely. And um, again, the, this, you know, for the record, when I took the, the engine apart that we're uh, running in the, uh, ran in the car last year, you know, I ran a lot of uh, aftermarket blocks with the, uh, the conventional small block board 438 board space stuff. And with that short deck block, you know, I always had a fretting of the cap, right? It didn't matter, you know, if it was a, a billet block, a dart block, pin, not pin, you'd always see some metal transfer. When I took that, this block, the, the stock block apart, it was mint. Now, is that, very, that's very literally happy. from the cap walking back and forth. Yeah. So the surface is just grinding, which yeah. also means your crank's not staying in place. Yep, right. So with this, you know, so, you know, again, we didn't put these on because we broke something. We just wanted to, you know, kind of say stay one step ahead of, of the game. So any other tips, tricks, things that you learned when you took the old thing apart mm -hmm. that are going to help you go from, say, mid 1700s to maybe mid 1800 horsepower level? Well, you know, one thing, you know, what, what we'll do, and we'll do it with the other one, obviously, we'll plug the oil, oil spurters. We won't need that for the drag racing application. Right. The other thing um, that we probably can get into uh, on another video is, you know, some of the issues we had with the cam drive. You know, I had heard uh, stories of a couple other people that might have had issue. Um, nothing really published on it. We hadn't had a failure. And then we did have um, two issues. One, on the race motor, when I was running a thick weight oil, Right. And I had the tensioner, the, uh, the chain tensioner for the cam, actually push hard into the chain and kind of melted that plastic uh, tensioner arm. Oh, wow. And then on a, a customer engine, which is very disappointing uh, for the customer as well as myself, he actually broke um, the cam bolt. Now it's really not a bolt, it's a fastener. We can get into that in more detail. So those are things we've addressed as, as well. Um, and uh, we think it's very short amount of time until just we'll have a belt drive out for these uh you know we've seen pictures uh of progress <laughs> and we're just waiting to get the parts in our hands to uh to try i was actually uh, up at jessel last week mm -hmm. and i saw a whole table full of seven three godzilla parts so jessel's jumping in the godzilla game there's a lot of companies out there right now this is an amazing time um 430 horsepower stock and now we're seeing 17 and 1800 horsepower versions of the godzilla in a relatively short period of time. And yeah, absolutely. The other thing, you know, again, you know, all motors, you know, from the Ford Flathead through the small block Chevy, the 289, 302 Fords, uh, Gen 3 Hemis, LSs, you know, they all had a, a, a length of time the parts were really available for the right. aftermarket. I think even the LS stuff really didn't start to really take off into four or five years after they're in production. And so with this, not even in production two years with the parts that are available from cams, rods, pistons, um, connecting rods, uh, billet caps, fuel injection fuel, systems, fuel injection systems, 
um, I'm really pleased with how fast uh, the, it's taken to the aftermarket. Yeah, not only that, but um, the type of companies that have jumped in, you know, in the 70s and 80s, you didn't really see a lot of upstart companies, of course, Holly, Edelbrock, um, CompCams, all the big name companies were leading the way with aftermarket parts. And the thing that I think is really unique to the 7.3 Godzilla is that smaller companies and even upstart companies have come out of nowhere. Uh, you know, Indy Power Products with its intake oil pan and uh, front dress system and 417 Motorsports, right? Yep, with a really um, cool pan that they've come out with. Yeah. Of and course, Willis Performance right here. Willis Performance, uh, <laughs> Danbury Competition Intake with our, excuse me, Danbury Competition Engines have come up with a sheet metal intake that I think they offer for a very attractive price. You know, I mean, a sheet metal intake's all a lot of, a lot of effort. Yep. And uh, so they've got some nice intakes to fit out of stock box body. So, um, yeah, lots of stuff available. Um, and now we just got to see what we can do. And, you know, even the pro chart, I mean, yeah, you know, Pro Charger, they've got a crank driven Pro Charger right. for the Godzilla specifically designed already. Yep, and of course you've already run a Whipple. Yep, and of course you got, the, as you going to say, and then you got, the, we ran the Whipple last year. So, and again, the reason, you know, we're doing this is, and, you know, twin turbo car that we, that we put together. So we're doing these projects so that when we're talking to people or advising potential customers or maybe people that just have an interest and want to do it themselves, we can speak with that and experience as opposed to I think, and maybe, you know, we know what, what they'll do. One thing we do want to do is give credit where credit's due. You know, Will's performance, we do not do our own machining. We use a guy in Southeast Michigan, Dave Petit. So all the, everything in here, you know, what Dave and I talk about, you know, his machining expertise, you know, brings us to reality. So uh, we want to make sure we give credit to the guy that actually did the work on the block, which is Dave Petit. Yeah. So that's another video on a 7.3 Godzilla. Got to thank everybody for watching the channel. We're having some fun with this stuff. It's been uh, it's been pretty awesome so far. It's only going to get better as we try to go for 18 plus 100 horsepower with this thing. So we got more coming up. Thanks for checking us out, and we're signing off.